Hi, Mariko. Uh, on behalf of everyone here at Bennington, welcome. Thank you so much, Jason. I'm thrilled to be here. So what made you decide to come to Bennington? I think Bennington is very distinctive. There are themes that have come out in conversations with faculty and students, and I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of alumni, which is really wonderful. And, and some of the themes are things like creativity across the curriculum, how the history of arts at Bennington has translated into a way of thinking, uh, an ethos, if you will. It's embedded in the DNA of the place, and how that influences the way that people think about all kinds of problems. And given the national conversation now about the importance of thinking interdisciplinarily, the Bennington approach to bringing in all the different threads from different disciplines and not privileging one kind of intelligence over another, but really seeing how you can maximize all the different kinds of intelligence when trying to answer a question. I heard it when I talked to the faculty, I saw it when I met with the students and, and the alums as well. And I think it's, it's a huge part, it's not the only thing, but it's a huge part of what Bennington has to contribute to the world. We can't talk about Bennington without talking about the arts. So I wonder if you have any ideas about uh, the future of the arts at Bennington and there are things that uh, directions it might go in. Well, I think there are there are always lots of opportunities. I think some of it is going to be driven by what the faculty and students' interests are, uh, as well it should be. Um, <clears throat> I myself am not an artist. My husband is a musician. My father was a documentary filmmaker who made films about art and creativity, uh, and my mother is currently the acting chairwoman of the National Endowment for the Arts. So. <laughs> didn't come to me <laughs> as a skill set, but I'm surrounded by it. And uh, what I see from them and what I learn from them is that you can't, you, you can't, you shouldn't dictate the arts. I think in terms of the role of the arts in a liberal arts education, the way I like to think about it is that the arts help to bring in and emphasize what I would call creativity across the curriculum, which means creative problem solving, creative thinking, bringing multiple kinds of intelligence and multiple angles of thinking about a problem together, uh, you're going to come up with more interesting and better solutions, solutions that are more amenable to larger parts of the community uh, and can be better communicated, I think, over time. So those are some of the ways in which I think the arts as a, an integrated part of a liberal arts education can be not just beneficial but truly essential. So we've talked a lot about the arts, uh, but there's also science happening here at Bennington. And I wonder, coming from such a large research institution, how is that going to translate uh, here at Bennington, which is so small? I think there are a lot of exciting things going on in the sciences here at Bennington. And a, a couple of things stand out. So uh, there was a survey done of science students at Bennington. And when they surveyed them, they found that 18 out of 25 had come in expecting to do something else but had been inspired by a particular faculty member or inspired by a particular experience to pursue the sciences. And then they combined their other interests with a concentration in the sciences, things like physics and dance. It happens because if you can get out of the disciplinary strictures, it's actually the way that people think. People don't necessarily think in discipline. Some people do, and that's fine. But <clears throat> Bennington allows you to follow whatever path is natural for you in trying to approach a problem uh, within the sciences or outside the sciences. Bennington has a really wonderful model for that. So you worked with Michael Crow at Arizona State, who's an innovator in higher education. And I'm wondering what uh, experiences you'll bring from that to Bennington. Well, obviously I loved working for Michael, otherwise I wouldn't have stuck with him for a decade. And part of what I loved about working for him is he is he's an idea generating machine. But he also is really interested in good ideas wherever they come from. So as a staffer working for him and, and working at his right hand, I saw him taking ideas from students and faculty and staff and alums and community members and people who had no affiliation with the school but you know, were really interested in what he was doing. I also worked very heavily on the international uh, international aspect of what Michael wanted to do, what he calls global engagement, and really thinking about the relationship between higher education infrastructure in China and India and Europe and so forth, Mexico, and really thinking about how that works from a macro policy level with the U.S. educational uh, infrastructure and what that then means for a particular institution and how a particular institution can engage fruitfully in, uh, with international partners. And there are lots of different ways to do that. Uh, I think also that what I learned a lot about uh, research and interdisciplinary work and how that gets done. Uh, there's a lot of great work being done here at Bennington by faculty and students uh, on uh, advancing research. And I think there are support infrastructures that can be put in place here um, that will be 
that will help to enhance that. And do you think Bennington uh, is at a unique uh, place in this larger national conversation, given the things that make Bennington unique, like fieldwork term and the plan process? I think, first of all, uh, Bennington has something to say as an institution about education, <clears throat> about the value of education, about the value of a Bennington education. And I think we should be shouting that from the rooftops. We need to be more vocal about what it is that makes Bennington special. It used to be that the, the liberal arts were under siege. And uh, somebody asked me, one of the students asked me when I came up to visit, how would you defend the liberal arts? I take a very different view. I don't think the liberal arts need to be defended, because I think if you start in a defensive crouch, you're inevitably going to lose. I think what needs to happen is that the, uh, that the liberal arts need to be articulated. We need to um, continue to develop our understanding of the value of a liberal arts education uh, at the same time as we need to continue to articulate our understanding of the value of a college education. What is it that makes Bennington a transformative experience and not just a networking or, or uh, vocational experience for students? The whole idea that you would come to college in order to pursue your, to find perhaps, and then also to pursue your passion uh, and to take that out into the world as a lifelong learner. There's a lot of talk about lifelong learning. And what does that really mean? Does that mean going back to school seven times? Does that mean uh, reading for your whole life? Does that mean being simply an inquisitive person? It may mean all of those things. But for a Bennington graduate, I think it means something meatier. It means something distinctively different. Uh, it is about being an inquisitive person. It is about seeking out new information. But it's also about continuing to craft yourself in the world in a way that I think is, if not unique, very distinctive. Yeah, well, correct. <laughs> Excellent. Pass.